I recently fell into the rabbit hole of making specular holograms, also known as scratch or abrasion holograms. A specular hologram is made up of glints created by the reflection of light from arc-shaped surface scratches. The motion of these glints with the viewing angle creates the impression of a 3D image. Unfortunately, the 3D nature of the images cannot really be conveyed in the video here. I started trying to make scratch holograms with my vinyl cutter. Generally this works and I was able to create scratch holograms on reflective foil and even on thin aluminum sheets. On the aluminum sheets, not surprisingly, the cutting knife quickly turns dull. I tried to replace the cutting knife with a single flute engraving bit mounted into a 3D printed holder but this also did not significantly improve the quality of the scratches. In the end I decided to convert my Prusa MK4S 3D printer into an engraving machine. At first I tried my punch tool for engraving, which generally worked, but later I bought a spring-loaded engraving bit which had a much smaller tip. I also replaced the spring of the engraving bit with a much softer spring from a ballpoint pen. To mount the engraving bit I removed the print and hot end fan and fixed the engraver into a 3D printed holder that attaches onto the extruder. Since I wanted to build a clock, I designed two different clock faces in Fusion 360. There are several codes out there to generate scratch holograms from a 3D model. Even though it is not freeware, I ended up using Holocraft because it offers the most comprehending features. The software allows to configure the density of the generated arcs, the light angle and the perceived depths, as well as direct SVG export. With the help of Copilot, I also wrote some Python code that generates circular scratches from an STL model, because I wanted to create rotating animations as shown in these Star Wars LPs. The SVG file produced by Holocraft was then turned into G-Code using the included G-Code plugin within Inkscape. In order to be able to align the work piece, I added a small triangle into the SVG file. In the G-Code file, a pause is then added at the starting point of the triangle and the triangle path is deleted. Before engraving, I marked the center position of the workpiece and removed the engraving bit from my 3D printer. After uploading the G-Code file and starting the print, it first completes the mesh bed leveling and then moves to the center position that was marked with the triangle in the SVG file. The engraving bit is then mounted onto the extruder and the workpiece is aligned below. The height of the engraving bit is adjusted by hand so that it just touches the workpiece. Finally, the workpiece is fixed with magnets. I used the textured steel sheet underneath the workpiece to increase friction. Be sure to have enough clearance for the magnets, otherwise your workpiece may slide away and you start to engrave the steel sheet of your 3D printer. I tried to engrave aluminum and black acrylic. Engraving acrylic is more delicate, because if the force of the engraving bit is too large, you do not produce glints, but deep scratches that appear white. Also, the hologram is less bright than those produced on aluminum. Buffing the surface of the aluminum with very fine 3000 grit sandpaper reduces the interfering glare from the specular rift surface but also decreases the overall brightness of the hologram. I also engraved some transparent plastic pieces I had lying around, which worked rather well. I used these to experiment with a kind of Nixie tube like assembly but abandoned this idea again. I also experimented with circular scratches generated from my own Python code in order to create animations of rotating bodies. However, they didn't look nearly as nice as those on the Star Wars LPs. And after all, it was time to move on to the next project.